Thanks very much. Thanks uh, to HBrand for the opportunity to speak. I've never um, spoken publicly about uh, uh, the exit from activation energy, so uh, it's, it's an entertaining thing to do to go back over your last few years and sort of look at the, the numbers and the dates and when did things happen. And what you'll see is I also looked at the old horrendous slide deck templates that we used, um, and I, I've, I've added some of them in. So maybe a, a lesson you'll learn is don't, don't knock companies for bad slide deck templates because some of them are pretty horrendous. Um, so this is the story of Activation Energy and uh, HBAN and Patrick and Enernock and a little bit about Utility AOR. So um, me, I'm a, an electrical engineer. I worked for SEAI for some years. Um, I'm an energy geek, you could say, um, and only trying to be a technology geek. Um, I founded Activation Energy. Um, and we, we received HBAN investment in 2011. We exited in February uh, 2014. Um, in more recent years, basically last year particularly, I, I was a HBAN investor, so I crossed the table and invested in a few uh, startups. And now I've crossed the table back again, and I'm founding a new company. So Activation Energy, um, the initial business plan was written in 2008. Um, so we were an overnight success after three years. Um, there was a lot of work around regulation. So we were an electricity company, and we were regulated by the CER, and all our contracts related to air grid and SEMO. So there was a lot of work around that. Um, when we received investment, we were still pre-revenue. Um, we, uh, so so like, that's a takeaway. We, were a, um, we, we received a competitive start fund in 2011, um, largely because I needed to eat food. Uh, we were completely broke at the time. Um, then we received an investment from a HBAN investor, Aidan McDonald in Cork. And um, he invested in October 11. He was a very experienced businessman. He had two previous businesses, which had done well for himself. Um, he understood the energy business. One of those businesses was in energy. Um, and he came and worked for the company for periods full-time working for the company, other periods part-time working for the company as needed. And he was very critical to the success of the business. It's a big takeaway, and it's something I've very much thought about when I've been investing is, is this a company I actually want to work for, not just invest in? Um, then we received investment from BVP, a small investment fund in Sandyford, some of you might know, in December 11. And we didn't start earning revenue until 2012, July 2012. So everyone had to go through a, a very uncomfortable valley after the money was there of just burning until we began to earn money in 2012. Um, HBAN, critical to getting that first investor in. And Aiden's investment was critical to getting BVP's money in. So thank you very much, guys. You're doing God's work. Um, <clears throat> so what did we do? I haven't given this slide for a long time. I used to give this for a living. Uh, so what you see on the top is uh, the electricity grid. Generators generate power. Users consume power. And national grid, or air grid, sit in the middle. It's their job to balance the network. And they do that by telling generators ramp up and ramp down. And we gave them a new tool, which was flexible demand. Customers who are willing to stop milling cement or freezing food uh, or could switch over to backup generation for a short period of time. So it was a new tool for AirGrid to balance the system. It's very important with more wind and renewables on the system. Um, and ultimately, so AirGrid paid us money, and we paid customers. So I, who I call our customers there, we actually paid them money. Um, <clears throat> having just began to earn money in uh, summer 12, we, by the end of 13, we had 50 megawatts of capacity, which is a lot. Um, we were at 2 million run, weight, uh, run rate um, at that point, and we were doing that with five staff. So, so we ramped up quite quickly. It was all about setting everything up in the right way initially. Um, <clears throat> and so Enernock came along. The truth is I had been cultivating a relationship with Enernock from before we got funding all along. The business plan said they would buy us, though we'd never had that conversation. When you're writing a business plan, you've got to say someone's going to buy you, and that's who we said would buy us. Um, <clears throat> they were a NASDAQ-listed leader in demand response. So the same business as we were in, they did it all over the world, in 12 countries at the time. And they were on a buying spree, something we couldn't have predicted. But that year, they acquired five businesses. <clears throat> Their reason for buying us was global footprint. They didn't care about our revenue. They didn't care about our technology. All they wanted to do was broaden their footprint at the time. 
Um, and they saw us as a UK and Irish business, not just an Irish business, even though at the time we had nothing done in the UK whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> it was a good exit for everyone, the investors and staff, and people are always interested how long did it take from, from that first dinner where we discussed divorce and marriage. Uh, uh, it took five months to close the deal. So the outcomes. Um, there's now 40 people employed in the business in Dublin. So from the five when they acquired us, we've ramped up to 40. And 30 of those are involved in international business, not Irish business. Um, <clears throat> there's nine similar businesses in Ireland and the UK. So people who copied our model and have something similar going on. So they're all employing people. We've lowered costs for, uh, of energy in UK and Ireland. We've saved the participating industrials lots of money and made them more competitive. We've improved electricity system resilience and we've facilitated more renewables. But the outcome you're interested in hearing is this one. So EI, on their competitive start fund money, in two and a half years made 4.5x. The first investor, the, the, the HPAN investor, made 8x in two and a quarter years. And BVP made 2.7 in just over two years. So everyone had a very quick return. So it's very positive for, for all involved, and myself, I should say. Um, but here are some thoughts, and I think this is really what I wanted to express to you guys. Um, how much money so, should we have raised? So as a, uh, as a promoter of a business, we, we, there was a business plan that said we needed a certain amount of money, and we raised an amount of money for that. But then in practice, we put our heads down and worked really hard to get in revenue. And a whole chunk of the money that we raised, we never touched. It sat in the bank. And that was great for me, because if something had gone wrong, I still had dinner the next night. Um, however, perhaps as investors, even though all the investors were, were privy to what we were doing, um, maybe it wasn't the right thing. Um, why did we try to grow revenue so quickly? Uh, or should we have tried to grow more quickly? So should we have taken that money and tried to grow quicker? <clears throat> Truth is, we focused on revenue. And I know you're thinking, growth and revenue, aren't they the same thing? But I mean growth geographically. Ireland is a small little place, and we should have done a small business in a bigger geographical area, not focused in Ireland, made so much in Ireland, which is what we did. And the real reason for that is the day that they bought us, they bought a German company. That German company had, I think it was roughly speaking, a quarter of the revenue that we had. They were losing a ton, and they got 4x the valuation off Enernoch that we did because they had set up a business to scale, whereas we had set up a business to make money. And the amount of money that we make doesn't, doesn't move the, um, the needle for, for, for an acquiring company. It didn't matter. What we should have done, possibly, <laughs> is focus on broadening our, our opportunity. And the final thing is, should we have sold? The truth is, when I went into Enernoch, while they seemed like a behemoth who couldn't be touched, when we went in, so we were a five-person company and they were a thousand-person company, I feel confident now we could have taken them on. We really could have. So that is uh, um, Enernock, and I've continued. They were great employers and I've enjoyed my time working with them, but I moved on to the next gig. So uh, Utility AR, I'll just mention this for a moment. I believe that augmented reality smart glasses, I have a pair of them here, are going to eat the world. They're going to take over everything. And what we're doing is building a software company that builds software for technicians, for um, industrial customers, who are my former customers, and utilities, who are my former customers, um, to help their technicians get their jobs done. So what are these glasses, you might say? Well, there's a load of different pictures. You've probably heard of Google Glass that's over there, or HoloLens. But the truth is, there's 50 different companies making headsets right now. And they are going to be for all different applications. So what they can do is they can see where in the world they are, they can recognize things, and they can display data on the glass. Sorry, these are transparent glasses where they, the person can see through them, but they also see a layer of data. And I might be one of the first people standing up to you talking, uh, in front of you talking about augmented reality glasses. You're going to be blue in the face of this over the next couple of years. It's going to eat the world. Um, so, oh, sorry, wrong button. So, um, I would love to hear from you if you'd like to join my investor. Uh, we're not raising money yet. We will be this summer. If you'd like to uh, be added to our investor newsletter, I'll be sending updates over the next while. Thank you.